Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I have a lot of stuff here. So this has been, I guess, um, received over the last few weeks and um, a few people reached out to me asking if they could send me some inks or we did an ink swap. So uh, this one is from Old Lady with a Camera, her Instagram name. And this one is from Harp. Thank you very much. And this one, this lovely package is from Kara Mishmash. Thank you so, so much. And then this one here, I'm gonna show you, it's related to all of this. So let's unwrap this one first. So somebody uh, on Instagram reached out to me. It's Fountain Pendulum and they specialize in wood products for fountain pens and fountain pen ink. And she sent a lovely, um, no, oh, it's stickers. You guys know how I feel about getting little stickers and stuff. Oh, this is Toronto Pen Co. Great Lakes. So she is also a Canadian. Uh, and let's see here. Thank you for the interest in the handmade wood desk accessories. And it's poplar wood with an espresso finish. Oh, wow. Beautiful. So her company is Fountain Pendulum, both on YouTube and on Instagram. So you can look her up there. And the ink is Pilot Kuchiku with using her Leonardo, Leonardo Memento Zero. Ah, perfect. Okay. So you probably have already seen this featured on other channels like Simona's or Simone or Leanne Likes. And I was so happy when she reached out because I've been looking for something like this. But, uh oh, some ink spilled. Okay, and there's more ink in here. What is this? Toronto Penco Great Lakes. Uh, I'm excited to use that. There's a very tiny bit left here, but I will go ahead and swap that. So, this is such a cute little ink holder. And I chose this in the espresso wood finish. And then you can actually choose the color of the felt that's going to go at the bottom. And that felt is so important because it really helps prevent scratching on your table. But I mean, yeah, it kind of does slip around, but it does help to keep it from falling over or scratching your table. And then this one I'm really excited for because, oh, wow, look at that. Look at the beautiful wood and then it'll hold the ink sample vials in there and then you can rest a pen on there. And I chose the dark espresso wood. Look at the finish, beautiful. And then I chose the dark felt underneath as well. So. How beautiful does that look? So let's put this to the side. You can see here that it will fit pens nicely, so you can, you know, you can fit the Estherbrook SD in there really well, or you can fit. Oh, that's not too bad. It fits the Kakimori brass nib in there with the uh, pen holder, and then in terms of ink sample vials, oh, that fits in there perfectly, and then you've got that that fits in there perfectly as well so oh i love that thank you thank you so much for sending these to me along with this ink so i have another ink to swatch with everything and if you are interested in any of the wood products once again the name is fountain pendulum both on youtube and on instagram all right let's get to swatching those inks so for swatching i'm using my b6 galen leather notebook with 400 gsm to moe river paper and i will also be using my, what is this again? My Kakamori Brass Nib Pen. I'll be using a sample ink vial to do my swirly whirlies. And what else am I doing? Water, that is all I need. All right, let's get swatched. First ink I'm gonna swatch is from Kara Mishmash. She sent me two bottles of ink. She sent me Colorverse Pillars of Creation, as well as Corail. Okay, I know some French. Corail de Tropique and my pronunciation is going to be off. So let's go ahead and start swatching. So I'll be doing this in two places. I'll be doing it in my Galen leather notebook and I'll also be doing a swatch on my Rhodia paper because I keep track of all of my swatches that way. So let's find, I need a piece of paper underneath it. So the first ink is the Colorverse Pillars of Creation and it goes down pretty dark. And then when I swirl it around with my sample ink vial, you can see how dark it is. And then it, when it dries, it's going to have this very prominent green sheen. I'm not normally one for a sheener ink, but you know, this one's pretty. And the purple in it actually reminds me a little bit of Sailor Shiki or Ihara Hara. But I'll compare that towards the end. Oh gosh, Lucy's barking in the background. <laughs> 
But overall, like the smoothness of this ink, it's got a good flow uh, coming off of my Kakamori nib. And you can see the way it would look with the different line widths there. And I don't feel like it has a ton of shading. It really is more of a sheening ink, which you will see once it dries. The next one is Corée des Tropiques, and I had to look up how to say that. <laughs> And this was one that I wanted a sample of, but Kara was kind enough to send me the whole bottle. So I'm placing a dot on my Tomoe River paper as well as the Rhodia paper and swirl it around. And oh my gosh, it is tropical coral or coral. Yeah, tropical coral. It is very orange. It looks very orange on the camera. And writing with it with the Kakamori brass nib, you know, it seems to have an average flow. But what I noticed about this ink is that it doesn't really have much shading. It's a very flat ink. And I don't know, maybe if that was just the way that I put it down on the page, but it just felt like there wasn't a lot of shading to be had in this ink. It's a very pretty coral uh, orange color, but I wish it did have some more of those shading properties. The next ink is Diamine Celadon Cat, and this one was voted on by the Fountain Pen community on Reddit, and I know there's different ones every year, and I can't remember, is it Sailor's Warning? Sailor's Warning is the other one, but I was really interested in this one because, look at that blue. It is a gorgeous, muted blue, and I don't know what it is about this blue. It's not a baby blue. I can't call it a baby blue. What kind of blue is this? <laughs> So I really, really like it. The flow seems like an average flow and it's got really great shading. And you can even see when it first goes on, when you're first writing with it, it looks a little light, but I feel like the, with the writing sample, it does dry a little bit darker, but I do really like it so far. And I hope to be able to use this in a pen. This one I actually got two samples of, so I won't be swatching the second one after. The third one is Waringal Alice in Wonderland. And I have been curious about this ink for ages and it's actually funny that I'm swatching this immediately after Diamine Celadon Cat because you can see that there are similarities to the two inks and actually it, it makes Diamine Celadon Cat look a little bit more green and wearing Ghoul Alice, once it dries, you're going to see that gorgeous gold shimmer beautiful and it shades really really well i don't think i got a lot of shimmer in my kakamori brass nib just because it probably had settled in the sample vial by the time i dipped my pen but still a really beautiful ink i'm so glad i got this as a sample the next one is colorverse mystic mountains and I seem to be having a bit of a blue theme with some of the samples that I chose from Kara. And when you swirl it around, another blue ink. This one seems a little bit more purple. It's leaning a little more towards the, the purple uh, with the blue. And I had to figure out the name of it, but this one has a really, really pretty shimmer. And it reminds me a little bit of a Ferris wheel press ink. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I'm going to show you not towards the end, but that shimmer is like a rose gold shimmer and it's beautiful. And so far actually looks really lovely and has a great flow with the Kakamori brass nib. So even in the different line widths, you can see that it is quite a legible and beautiful ink. The next one is Jacques Herbon or Herbon, and this one is Bouquet d'Anton. And my daughter is going to uh, get mad at me for not pronouncing this correctly. So Bouquet d'Anton. And this is a lovely, lovely pink. I don't know what else to say about it. It is a, hold on. Yes, Bouquet d'Anton. <laughs> Just making sure I had the right one. But it is a very lovely pink. It reminds me a little bit of Sailor Ink Studio 237. Now, I don't know if the flow is going to be a bit different. I've heard Herbon inks can be a little dry, but so far on the Kakimori Brass Nib, it's actually doing pretty well. It feels dry at this point with the Rhodia paper, but overall, not too bad. The next one is Toronto Penco Great Lakes, and this one was the sample given to me by Fountain Pendulum, along with the pen and ink rests. And look at that blue. That is quite a strong prominent blue and once it dries it's going to have a little bit of a red sheen reminds me a little bit of uh, pilot Orochizuku Konpeki 
but uh, I've never tried a Toronto Pen Co ink, so I was really glad to get a sample of it. And I didn't even know that they made their own ink, so really, really nice. And it's nice to hear about different uh, fountain pen and ink companies that are Canadian as well. So again, a good average flow to this, and it looks like it's got really great shading along with the sheen. Next are four inks from Harp, and she sent me um, she sent me a, a few inks that I had um, asked for because we did an ink swap. So I asked for Diamine Ancient Copper, Diamine Sherwood Green, Diamine Celadon Cat, which I've already swatched uh, because I didn't realize I already asked for it from Kara. So I won't be swatching that one, but thank you Harp for that one. And then Robert Oster, Sydney Darling Harbor. And yeah, my hands are already covered, but hey, every ink swatching session is like that. So the first one from Harp is Robert Oster, Sydney Darling Harbor. And I had seen this originally on Helen's channel, Coffee Monsters Co. And I love this like darker, leaning to more teal green. It's a really, really pretty color. And it's looking at the shading on that. The shading is beautiful so far. And to be able to use this in a pen, once I actually put it down, well, with the brass dip pen, it felt like there was a lot of ink that went down at first. Uh, but then when I got the angle of the Kakamoe brass and the bright, it felt like it had a very, very good flow. And you'll be able to see with the different line widths that I do, that it is very legible. Great color. It still shows off that green without being too, too dark. And it shows off that great shading. Next we have Diamine Sherwood Green. I'm noticing I'm going for blues and greens right now. And this green was one, again, that I wanted to try because Diamine have really great inks. And at first glance, it looks very similar to Sydney Darling Harbor, but you could tell this green has a little bit more yellow to it. And it's more of a forest green or more of a Kelly green. That's why it's probably named Sherwood, like Sherwood Forest. <laughs> Goodness, the things, the conclusions that I come to when my brain is working. So I, when I'm doing my uh, ink swatching, I like to do like the different line widths and the drawing and the swirls because then it shows me the different properties and the way that this flows and can work in different nib widths. So far, I really like this one. Next is Diamine Ancient Copper and I don't know why I haven't tried this already. This has been a very popular one among the fountain pen community, and I can see why. It reminds me of uh, Earl Grey Tuna from Dominant Industry and Wonder Pens. It's a really good fall color, and look at all of that shading as well. And I think the way that it wrote with the Kakimori Brass Dip Pen, I think it would be good as well in a fine or an extra fine nib. And you'll be able to see the shading properties even a little bit in a fine nib, not as much as, you know, a medium or a broad nib, but you'll be able to still see the beautiful color. And you'll have great flow. You won't have to worry about this being too dry of an ink. Next, we have Herbant Bleu Azure. Again, don't know if I'm saying that right. Trying my best. Uh, and this blue, I wasn't, I don't know what I was expecting with it, but it looks like a highlighter blue. And I don't know how legible this one is going to be, but coming off of my Kakamori Brass Dip Pen, it came off well, it wrote well with it. Um, and I think you could certainly use this and it'd be legible, but I don't know if I necessarily like the color too much. And now that I look at it, it kind of looks like the base of Laringal Alice in Wonderland, but I don't know, there's something that just, I don't know if I would use this in the future. We'll see. Next, we have Birmingham Pen Co. Cherry Blossom. And why did I choose this one? Why do you think I chose this one? You're gonna see shortly why I chose this one. Isn't it pretty? It reminds me a little bit of Sailor Shikiori Yozakura. And I really like this kind of darker pink. You know what? I think I like pinks in general, and I never thought I'd really say that, but I do. Like pinks and purples. I really like them. And Birmingham Pinks, Birmingham Pen Co. inks seem to run quite wet as well. This one isn't too much. It hasn't feathered on the paper, which I've seen with other Birmingham Pen Co. inks. And you can see how well 
it shades on the Tomoe River paper. Beautiful, and I'm excited for this one. Next, we have Birmingham Pen Co. Barley. <laughs> Forgot what that was for a second. And when I chose this, I went strictly off of uh, what old lady with a camera basically showed me. And it is a lovely yellow. And I was actually looking for a yellow since I had finished my sample of Ferris Wheel Press Buttered Popcorn. But this one is a more muted yellow and I feel like is a lot more legible than most yellows. This does look a little more orange than yellow, but it's muted um, and still legible, thank goodness. So I will compare this to other similar colors, but I do like the way that it shades. You can see the way that that ink pools, it's beautiful. And then lastly, we have Birmingham Penco Milk Weed. Such a strange name for an ink, and I wasn't, I don't know if the name matches the color, uh, but look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty purple. And I, I enjoy that one so, so much. It looks very, like through the camera, it looks very similar to Cherry Blossom, but this one is definitely darker and leaning more towards the purple. I really liked this one. And the Birmingham Pen Co. inks that I have tried today haven't been too wet. They haven't feathered on the paper. They've been, they've had a good flow. So I'm really pleased with the ones that I've chosen to try and I cannot wait to put these into a pen. So just a quick review of all of the inks. There we have Colorverse Pillars of Creation. You can see that green sheen on that. Look at that, that's beautiful. And then Herbon Corail des Tropiques is, there, there isn't much shading happening. It's really just kind of a flat color. Even in, you know, the, the writing sample, it feels like it's a very flat color, but it's a very nice tropical coral. <laughs> and then let's move to the ink samples. So I really love Diamine Celadon Cat. I just, it reminds me of Storied Blue. Let me pull that out. Yes, it is very similar to Ferris Wheel Press Story Blue. I love that. Such a great ink. This one I feel like has a little bit more of like a pinky gray undertone, but you can see that here as well. Oh, fantastic ink. And then you have underneath there, Wearing Ghoul, Alice in Wonderland, Alice, and you can see that gold shimmer. You don't see it as much in the writing sample just because of when I dipped my Kakimori nib in here, but look at the swatch. That is fantastic. I love that. And the blue, the base blue, is very similar to Celadon Cat and Storied Blue. And then you have Colorverse Mystic Mountain. This reminds me a little bit of, and I'm going to pull it out here. First, we'll press, I think it's Blushing Mushroom, or I believe it's, ah, oh, there he is. Nope, there's Blue Barrel Tonic. Oh, very similar to Blue Barrel Tonic. It's, Blue Barrel Tonic has the it's the blue base, obviously, because it's blue barrel, and then similar shimmer. Very, very pretty. Now the next one, Herbal Bouquet Danton. I don't know if I have a pink similar to that at all, and I'm trying to actually look through all of my ink samples there. Let me see. I honestly don't think I have anything very similar to that. Oh, you know, Sailor Ink Studio 237 might yes yes sailor ink studio 237 is very similar to bouquet danto and actually that has a little bit more shading than corail des tropiques so very pretty very pretty and then the next one toronto penco great lakes that immediately reminds me of con pecky so pilot Hiroshizuku con pecky you don't see the sheening as much in the rhodia paper yeah, the rodeo paper, but it does, it is very similar in that regard. Oh, very cool. And then moving to this side, Robert Oster Sydney Darling Harbor is beautiful. And it reminds me a little bit of Pitted Nickel, Birmingham Penco's Pitted Nickel. You can see though, this has a little bit of like a grayish pink undertone to it, but kind of in the similar color family. Oh, I'm so excited to use that one. 
Then we have Diamine Sherwood Green, which I feel like I have a few in that same color family. The one that I'm gonna pull out is Monarcha Nepal, Nopal, Monar I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Monarcha, oh, here we go. And I think it was also similar to Diamine Holly. Oh, not as similar as I thought it would be. And let me pull out the uh, Rhodia sample. Yeah, not as similar as I thought it would be. So it's not that one. It is a Di yeah, Diamine Holly. Let's look for that one. Diamine Holly, yes. Diamine Holly is definitely more blue in terms of the, the green, but you can tell there's a bit of the red sheen there. Really, I, I really like that green. Now, actually, let me think. Pilot Iroshizuku, does it have, um, I think Sui Gyoku might be similar. Shin Ryoku is a bit lighter and Sui Gyoku is more teal than anything. So really not as similar. The Diamond Ancient Copper, love the fall feel of that color. And that reminds me of pumpkin cake or there is the sailor tintarias in the what was that one it was the uh, spicy chipotle oh no not so much more so the monteverde pumpkin cake oh i'm gonna pull the rodeo sample move this up as well so you can see but Okay, you can see some similarities, but Monteverde Punk Pink Cake is a little bit darker than the um, Ancient Copper. So let me put this back here. And then we have Blue Bleu Azure. Herbant Bleu Azure. Still trying to pronounce that correctly. I'm trying to think what else I have that's similar to it. And I don't think I do, because this looks more like a highlighter blue. Do you know what I mean? It looks more like a highlighter blue. So I don't think I have anything close to that even in the lighter blues and if i'm comparing it to even like celadon cat or wearing ghoul alice they're not at all similar so this is a very very light light ink when moving to cherry blossom so there is the swatch on the rhodia and this one i immediately thought sailor shikiori yozakura uh where are you Hold on, I'm <laughs> getting all of my inks here. So Shikiori comes after Manyo. This is in alphabetical order if you are curious. <gasps> Where is Yuzakura? Oh my gosh, it's not in here. Um, Yui. Unless I put it in the wrong spot, which is completely possible. Ooh, but then there's comparing it to Dusky Pink. Oh, interesting. Uh, but no, I think it looks like Yozakura. There it is. Like it's got, you know, this is darker than Yozakura and this is slightly more pink, but you can see some similarities there. And actually now that I pulled it out, it looks also very similar to Milkweed, but I feel like Milkweed is gonna be darker. That looks more like Teranishi. I'm jumping around here. Teranishi, I was gonna say Innocent Mauve, but this is more like gray purple. Oh, I like that. And then barley. I don't have a color that is like that. The closest that I think in terms of like yellows, I mean, there's Robert Oster Gold Antica, uh, kind of. Uh, and then very similar in that regard is khaki. This one is darker, more brown. And then Pilot Iroshizuku, actually this is similar to Pilot Iroshizuku. It's a Sailor Shikiori 50th anniversary. Or let's find Inaho, which, let me see there. Ooh, you know what? That's very similar. When you look at it with the Rhodia paper, this is a bit more leaning towards like the orangey yellow. This is more leaning towards the brown. Interest. Like on, on the camera, when I look through, through the camera, this definitely looks more orange and this looks more like greenish brown. But in person, they look very, very similar. Interesting, interesting. Oh, so that is the end of my little haul here. So thank you again to Fountain Pendulum for sending me the 
uh, ink sample, vial, rest, and this singular one. I think it's so, so cute and so helpful when, when I'm doing my sampling. And then thank you to Old Lady with the camera and Harp and uh, Kara for sending me all of these inks. I completely appreciate the kindness of you guys doing that and taking the time to send them to me. And they're just gorgeous. Ooh, that one matches my nails. Anyway, that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.